Good morning. If you guys don't mind, I'm actually going to walk around a little bit. I, I don't particularly like to stand behind a podium when I'm talking to people in an audience, especially when we're going to walk through so many technical issues and uh, uh, demonstrations here this morning. I'm Patrick David. I'm the Research and Development Manager at Ship Constructor USA. I'm actually the first employee in the U.S. office when we opened it over five years ago uh, down here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, Rolf and the gang in Victoria saw a need to be able to support all of you better and to have personnel on the Gulf Coast as an opportunity to be able to um, assist you with any problems that you might have and made it a lot easier with the time zone changes and the fact that any of you that have been to previous user conferences had to fly halfway across the country or continent to, uh, to attend up in Victoria. So it's actually very nice to have this down here on the Gulf Coast for a change. I'm going to talk about realizing the present. With the functionality that's available in Ship Constructor now, I want to talk about some of the new things that we've introduced in recent versions of Ship Constructor and how that's going to affect your workflow and how you can use it to be more effective at the tasks that you need to do in Ship Constructor and with Ship Constructor data. Norman mentioned in his slides that we had somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, over 20 new features in the 2011 and 2012 releases and over 200 improvements in each of those versions of the software. So that's uh, over f almost 50 new features in 2011 and 2012 and uh, close to 500 improvements made in the software. I'd like to go through every one of them line by line right now and talk about every one of them. Got to you guys got to wake up a little bit. I apologize. I'm also going to do my best to modulate my voice because there's nothing worse than just hearing a monotone voice the whole time. It'll put you to sleep fast. You guys just came off a coffee break. So I'm hoping the caffeine will stick with you for at least the next 30 minutes. Right? So what we had when we were looking at Ship Constructor is that we had a solid feature set and a solid design set in previous versions of Ship Constructor. It was all pre-2011, right? We had a, a, a great product, I think. Um, 2008, 9 had some great functionality and was extremely usable for building ships with effectively. And that's where we're coming from. And we saw that in, uh, in Darren's presentation and Norman walked through the roadmap as well in a slight history. Of course, it'd be more fun. I, in retrospect, I should have gone back and put a sapling in there for Catlink. Um, but we have pre-2011 here on the left. Well, what we did in 2011, 2011 was we added um, some new features and some new functionality and worked hard on the stability and capability of the product. We grew our tree. We added some new features. We increased the size of the trunk, became a stronger product, a more solid product when we began using it. And we added some great new features. Um, Norman walked through the, uh, a more complete list. I'm just kind of touching on highlights of great things that have been done. We saw an increase in speed in 2011 over previous versions of Ship Constructor, up to 10% faster merge and refresh operations for those of you that had to use uh, Project Split and Merge in the past, and up to 50% faster speed improvements in generation of production output drawings. Usually, if, uh, I know I was recording videos for this session and I had to generate some assembly drawings of some complex stuff, and I had to wait. And it's normal. I mean, we're pulling a lot of data, culling through it, showing it in multiple views and filling out bill of material tables, but it was a little bit slower than I would have liked. In 2011, we saw a 50% increase overall in speed of generation of these production drawings and output. We introduced things like standard assemblies, which allowed us to define once a set of construction objects, right? Built objects in the yard with an associated assembly sequence for manufacturing that object, and then treat it as a single object when we're actually doing our modeling. I'm going to show a good example of that a little bit later on. We have enhanced product hierarchy capabilities, right? Being able to generate alternate product hierarchies, alternate build strategies, uh, to redefine the data that we've generated in a ShipCon project to provide us a different view into that data that might not necessarily have to coincide with a production sequencing, which has always been the traditional use of things like product hierarchy. Subscription Advantage Pack, which was talked about briefly with Norman as well. I'm going to show some features of this as well. But this is a great opportunity to show previews, technological previews of functionality that will eventually make it in the ship constructor, but you get a chance to view it a little bit early. Right? It's not a normal part of the core software at the time, uh, but it is accessible to try. And in some cases, uh, I've noticed at least, <coughs> excuse me, some of the examples that I'm going to show are, are really solid, even though they're Advantage Pack objects. I mean, they, they work very well, and they do some really neat things, I think, that you'll see shortly. Things like enhanced revisions. I get this question a lot. Who did what in a project when? Usually, it's for a blame game. 
90% of the time they're looking to nail somebody for doing something in the project. But now we have a capability to do that, to track and find out what exactly occurred in our ship constructor project at any given time based on user dates, any other criteria you might want to see. Batch update of production drawings. It means if I got a set of production drawings where I've made changes in the model and it might affect uh, you know half a dozen different production drawings for output, I can now say batch update all of those production drawings to show me the latest changes that might have occurred in my model without having to open each drawing, right? And then regenerate it, do the update, see what was changed, approve everything, say okay, and save it again. We can do it all in one go, right? Much faster approach to that. And being able to generate reports based on model drawing, not necessarily product hierarchy. We can now generate report output based on a model drawing. And that's the kind of functionality we saw just in 2011. This is just a highlight. Remember, there's, there's many, many more improvements and feature sets. I'm just kind of touching on the, the ones I thought were most interesting for what we're talking about. And we didn't stop there. 2011 got us a nice big tree. 2012 got us an even bigger tree with an even bigger trunk, with even more solid, uh, solid base and even better performance, right? We added some new features, yes, and, um, We've also seriously addressed stability and performance issues with Dennis, uh, kind of taking a, a much heavier role in 2011 and 2012 and focusing very heavily on things like stability issues and performance issues in the software. And it's really shown, especially in the latest version of the software, right? 2012 plus is, it's fantastic to use. And some of the new features that we saw here was again an increase in speed in a slightly different area this time. This time we were seeing up to 10% faster distributed systems modeling because pipes get in the way of my structure, and they, 10% <laughs> faster tube system modeling, up to 40% up to faster tube system part properties, are basically the part properties for pipe objects in a, in a model drawing for pipe. Much, much faster um, calls to the database to get and gather that information and to present it in the drawing and make it accessible to users when they're working. Support for AutoCAD 2012 and all of the neat functionality and interface, even though you may hate the ribbon, and other um, capabilities in 2012, AutoCAD have now been exposed in Ship Constructor as well. And some modeling improvements to the general modeling procedure. Things like enhanced construction lines, enhanced offset construction. I can offset a construction line now and trim it, extend it, break it, and it still retains its relationship to the original um, construction line. For those of you that do structure modeling, maybe, you know, a third of you in here. But it's a very handy feature. It's very nice to have now that I can make those changes. Enhanced end cut definitions, right? I'm actually going to show you a little bit further about this later, but we can now handle uh, much different system uh, arrangements for end cut definitions on objects that have been trimmed for stiffeners. New profile shapes. We've added a couple of new profile shapes as well. One step package deploy. You know, now I can take a ship constructor project if I need to, and I can say package it up. And what we will do is we will zip up the database, database back up, zip it up, grab all the project files and all the folder structure for that project, and put the whole thing into one file as a package. And on the other end, when you need to deploy it, there's a command in ShipCon that says deploy a project, and you point at that file, and we'll rebuild everything you need to be able to start working in the new project right away. Right? There's no more backing up a database, restoring a database, creating a file, creating a PRO file, connecting to it, and regenerating all the drawings. They all get packaged up. <clears throat> labeling improvements. I think Norman uh, showed a better picture than I have about uh, you know labeling because we spend a lot of time annotating drawing output, right? And we've made some nice improvements in the way that those labels are generated and shown uh, on our output drawings. Dynamic marking blocks. I can now predefine a set of marking block information, set of information that I want to be uh, included on a plate part, for instance, along with some parameters that I may want to have filled out at the time that it gets inserted. And it exists as a standard in the library where I can now go and as I'm structurally modeling, I can drop dynamic marking blocks wherever I need them. Alignment marks, for example, is a good example of how I can use these, right? Label to edges. Again, Norman showed that, I think, didn't you? I think he showed that as well. That, that's really, really very nice. That's just some of the functionality in 2012. Again, there's more. There's a lot more. These are just some, kind of some of the highlights. Well, I looked recently in generating this presentation for everyone, and I learned a couple things. One, that I'm a horrible ship constructor user. <laughs> I want to thank my support staff and the U.S. staff for being uh, very nice to me when I was trying to get my presentation together. I had a lot of questions about some things. But what I found when we took a look at the numbers on new releases of Shape Constructor with these great new features is that the majority of our user base is on versions of Ship Constructor pre-2011 in use right now. 
on projects. They may have 2012 in the office and are getting geared up to do new projects, and there's a handful of you that already have. But for the majority of working projects now, we were looking at pre-2011 release ShipCon, meaning that right now, the majority of you cannot access any of this new functionality that I've just described for no other reason than you have it updated, really. I mean, the availability is there. So what are you missing? What are you not able to do that's actually very neat? Let's have a quick look. Let's have a look at this 2012 uh, ship constructor tree and see what kind of things we're looking at. As I said, we added new profile shapes. I'm looking at you, Huntington Ingalls. I'm going to call you out by name. We now produce uh, the capability to make profile shapes like D-flange Ws, which are just W shapes with the lower flanges cut off, and improved joint conditions, which are T shapes with being D-flange according to parameters. Enhanced end cut definitions, like I said. If you had end cut definitions previously, and you applied it to stiffeners that had trims applied to them, the old way that we used to handle it would have been right here, or here, you can see this one better. If that trim was a radius cutout and I had trimmed my profile back, I would not have seen the cutout for that end cut condition because the trim would have obscured it. But we now have great new options. Now we can say, no, go to the first point of contact for that radius. Regardless, whatever that trim dimension is, when you get take that cutout radius definition and slide it back until I come to a first contact location or the full dimension, meaning apply it at the root of wherever that stiffener happens to be. Right? Heard this time and time again. It's a fantastic feature to have. We have things like standard assemblies, I said a moment ago, and these are great. These give you an opportunity to predefine some sort of structural piping, HVAC equipment combination as its own entity with its own product hierarchy. We generate those in the manager the same way you would manage equipment, for instance, where I have a type and then I can define individual different pieces of standard assemblies as a different type and uh, maybe I want to model a vertical ladder. I'm just going to go ahead and model it real quick. I'll, well, yeah, well, I've had a lot of coffee that morning. <laughs> I, was, I was moving a million miles a minute. And so I can use all the normal ship constructor structural modeling tools or pipe or HVAC or equipment in here in the standard assembly and define all these parts, right? This is kind of just free form modeling. You'll notice every one of those objects got um, a regular ship structure piece mark that was appropriate to the kind of object I put in, right? Pipe, structure, plate, round bar, stiffeners. And what happens is when I go to insert it in a model, once I've defined it and put insertion points, it's like with a piece of equipment. And I come in to insert it into the model, that entire object comes in as a single block, like a piece of equipment. And I can jump around insertion points as well. So I can do a piece of equipment and drop it in the model. Right? And at this stage, it looks like one object. Right? Ship structure says, well, it's one object. It's a standard assembly. It's a vertical ladder. That's what it is. Right? It inserts the same way a piece of equipment does if you've done them or you've got your uh, planes that you can rotate it about during insertion. But the nice thing about this ladder is that it can have its own build strategy for its for that one object, right? Meaning that I can define a set of assembly drawings for manufacture of that one assembly, the ladder, with all the associated cut parts and construction sequencing events if it's a more complex object. Say build it in this sequence and then you have a final object. That one assembly drawing for that ladder can now be reused as many times as I want. I've already placed one, I can place another in my project or another. I could put a dozen more in my ship. And what's great is every time they show up they all say go back and build me another ladder. Your production yard can say, well, what is it? Well, it's a 10-foot standard vertical ladder, pull a drawing off a shelf, that's how I make it. Parts are on their way. You see they exist in their own product hierarchy. is 10-foot vertical here with all those parts. It's a great way to do design once and reuse, especially if you have things like pump foundations, your foundating objects, right? You're putting other pieces of associated equipment in that might require some ship constructor cut parts uh, to mount and install. So, project revisions, where we now have the capability to say, well, who messed up? That's usually what I hear. I want to know who blew my model up, who was the last guy that did something in this particular drawing. 
Or was this done, and how long ago was it done? Well, from the Navigator window, you have access to this revisions window that we see here. And you can actually choose from any of the disciplines within Ship Constructor, along with the revision type, right? Uh, and there's, the, the list is huge. Created, modified, deleted, inserted, made an assembly drawing, did all these different um, operations. You can choose from this list as you want. Cut, deleted, approved. You can sort by uh, dates as well, and by object type or by username for your whole project all at once. So I'm just, I think I just chose structural parts. This list is everything that happened to every single piece of structural part that occurred in my entire project. And what's nice is that in this view, I can filter very quickly at the top. I say, I just want plate parts from unit 2110 that were created. And that's what I'm seeing in this view now, right? At any point, I can hit export and I'll automatically be able to dump a tab separated value file that I can load up into Excel and create a report, modify the information, whatever I want to do with it, right? I know one place that I particularly found as handy was that I was working on, I was managing a large uh, modeling design project and I needed to be able to estimate performance of the users on a daily basis roughly how many parts we're getting made every day, right? Anybody know internally, do you know what your own guys are doing? I was able to say per user how many plate parts, stiffener parts, standard parts were being created and inserted into the model by day. I actually had it broken down by hour too, so it was a fun big spike in the morning, little tail off as I got to lunch. <laughs> big tail after lunch and almost nothing from three to five. But <laughs> It's a new tool for looking at the data for what your users are doing in Ship Constructor. It's different from CIP data, by the way. Um, and then things like subscription advantage pack capability. And again, I said, you know, these features that I've tried are fantastic. They're rock solid and they do some really, really neat things. I was very impressed when I was creating this. Something like Project Explorer. You're all familiar in a Ship Constructor project with wanting to get around in the project, right? I want to, I want to go to this drawing. So I have to go to a unit, and then it's a structure drawing, and then it's a frame, and then it's frame 57. Or I want to hop back to unit 3110. So I got to click unit, frame, structure, 3110, or pipe, or HVAC, or whatever it might be. So it's, it's this standard interface we're all very familiar with from Navigator. Well, Project Explorer with the SC Advantage Pack actually gives me an AutoCAD palette window now that lists for me all of the valid drawings in my project in one view all at once as a palette that I could open up from anywhere within my modeling session. Right? That's my whole project here. And to get to any of these other drawings, it's just a double click. I want to see frame seven. We're on through frame six. I want to see something else. And what's great about this window is just like that revisions window, I can filter all of my drawings if I've got hundreds of units with thousands of drawings across my whole project, but I know I want to narrow it down to a specific subset, I can say, just show me things that are in 2110. As long as the drawing has 2110 in it, just show me those. Filter my whole list. Or if I just want to see drawings that have the word oil in them, waste oil, fuel oil, lube oil, say oil, and now my list has been filtered out very quickly to just those drawings. Very, very fast and easy way to navigate through a project. Much more intuitive, I think, for the modern users of uh, these kinds of design systems. I've also got my recent drawings. This is very handy too, especially if you're doing a lot of work in an area. These are just all the drawings that I've most recently accessed, listed by order of access. And having a look at any one of these, this bar is obscuring me, but uh, you can quickly see the last person that was in the drawing the last time it was modified, and I think what the last action was, if I'm not mistaken, um, in that particular drawing. And that's... <clears throat> That subscription advantage pack, um, Project Explorer. Have it as a tool palette on the side. Hop around as you need to in a project very, very quickly. Very, very nice. Part views, which is easily my, my favorite of the subscription advantage pack options. Um, this one's very, very neat for those of you that haven't seen part views yet. We all know the old paradigm when I'm modeling a ship constructor and I need to be aware of any objects that are nearby an area that I might be modeling. If I'm riding a pipe, place a piece of equipment, whatever that action might be, I need to be aware of what all uh, is happening nearby. All the structural objects, pipe objects, HVAC objects, space allocation objects, um, other pieces of equipment. I would do that historically through the M-Link Manager. 
right? M-Links, not, nothing new here. Just say, go to M-Link and pick out the ones that I think, and that's key, I think, are going to affect me. And I'll load them right up in the model. Here they are, right? Pick a handful of frames, some decks, and some things. I think that probably this is somewhere around where I need to work. So show it to me. And I have it. M-Link's great. We've all used it, and you have been using them for a long, long time. Part views is a little bit different, and it, it has almost completely changed the way I personally, at least, approach looking at spaces in Chip Constructor. Part views will basically allow me to say, make a volume somewhere in my project, in space. Maybe I draw a box. I've got a box that's, uh, well, let's look at the port side of this after this frame. So I've got a box. And SC, uh, Advantage Pack part views will let me do is say, for the extents of that box, which I'm about to draw, only load the ship constructor parts from anywhere in my project that either touch the box or are in the box. Don't load anything else. I don't need to load up the whole main deck. I don't need to load up every single frame all the way if I'm not interested in that portion of the model. I'm only working on the port side here, so just show me what shows up. And look here. Right? Part views let me go in and only load up the parts, any part in Ship Constructor that hit that volume, hit that box automatically, just those. I didn't get full frames. I didn't get a full deck. I only got objects that touched or existed within a volume. Right? Way faster, much more intuitive when I'm approaching any process. Now what's cool is, these objects that get linked in are not XREFs, they're ship constructor objects, they're called part view objects. Look at this, for those of you in the back that can't see it, that's a full set of ship constructor properties as exposed in the properties palette in AutoCAD. Right? The normal things you'd see if you were modeling in ShipCon and you clicked a part and said properties, what do you get? Part name, stock name, weight, center of gravity, LCD, VCD, TCG, product hierarchy location, part name. That all exists in these part view objects as well. And because they're part view objects, they're not actually model objects, I can delete them, destroy them, hide them, munge them however I want without any consequences in this drawing. Right? If I don't need to see all that deck, I don't have to go in and find the un, un m link the deck. I just select all those things and delete them. Get them out of my view right now. I can always get them back very easily. And now I just don't want to see it right now. So just delete it. Get it out of the way quickly. It's intuitive. It's intuitive when you're looking at that space. I don't want the deck in my way. Get it out of here. Delete it. Of course, I tell you this, and one of you guys is going to go back, and in your model, you're going to I want to get rid of that thing and delete it, and it's actually a model object in the drawing you're in. Never fails. Nothing. No feedback at all. That's cool. That's a great way to look at your project. Fast, intuitive. Uh, give me a space, show me what's in it. I don't need to see everything else, just show me what's in this space. That's where I'm building my foundation. That's where I'm building that deck at that point. Part properties is also really neat. Only because it forced me to go figure out how our BOM collectors work. For those of you that ever made a BOM. <laughs> Part properties what it allows you to do. If I open up a pipe model, right? Any pipers in here? Couple, right? I open up a pipe. I'm in a lube oil system and I say, well, I want to know some information about these pipes. I know, actually, I want to know information about all the objects that I'm seeing here right now. The Advantage Pack PAR properties will actually open up another AutoCAD palette for me that will show me all the data pertaining to all the parts that are currently in my drawing based on a bill of material that I've defined right here in this window. Right? If you've defined a BOM, it's right here. So for instance, for this lube oil system for the drawing that I'm in right now in Unit 2110, I could say, show me the cutlass drawing. Here's the same cutlass BOM that would appear if I just ran this whole thing as one spool and generated a spool drawing for it. A giant cutlass if I wanted. Or if I just want to see all information about all parts, here they are. I predefined this bill of material in our manager to give me stock name, spool name, stock description. That's the stock name, spool name, and stock description for every object in this drawing right now. And what's really neat is, if you select an object in that part view list or part properties uh, window, it'll highlight here in the model and vice versa, right? So if I highlight a part, I say, well, what is that part exactly? I can click on a part in the model, and it'll be highlighted in this, in this view, this BOM view over here. 
and your only limit is what data you want to see in your BOM. You can make a BOM that has as much data as you'd like. Not that handy? No? What about I click the part here, and if I right-click it in the part view, I can instantly be taken anywhere else in my project that that part exists. I want to jump right to the spool drawing for that part. Yeah, no problem. Go to the spool drawing. This will instantly open up the spool drawing that contains that piece of pipe right there. This is very handy. Those of us that uh, lived in the structure world had part list for years and we were accustomed to using it. This is the same kind of functionality, but now for anything in a shipcon project, especially pipe. There I am. I jumped straight to that pipe spool. I didn't have to figure out what spool name was and then go open up the spool from the navigator, click the part, pull the part property window, right click the part, and say go to the spool drawing. Right? And this is still up. It's still filled out with data that's valid for this spool drawing, meaning that I can select any other object in that spool and say go to the model drawing where that exists from a spool drawing. And I'll instantly jump from my spool drawing into the model drawing that that part exists in. Bang. There I am. This is really handy. Maybe it's not. Am I just, does nobody really care? I'll ask Dennis to remove it from the next version if you want. What's cool about these part properties window, though, is you can combine it with other cool advantage pack options. So maybe I'm doing something around this volume, volume, right? And I want to see what other Shipcon parts happen to hit this volume. OK, no problem. We just saw how to do that, right? I can run part views. Part views, here's my volume. Load up only the parts that hit that volume. So I can do that. They say starting up here, across here, for this volume, just load up the Shipcon parts that exist in this context. And I'll get them. Just these parts. What's fantastic about this is that every one of those Shipcon part view parts will appear in this part properties window as well right now. Right? And the same rules apply across this part property. So I loaded up a bunch of structural parts. Well. I'm going to refresh this view, and maybe I'm going to hop to a, a different BOM, maybe a BOM that uh, looks at the structural objects instead. So I'm going to have a look at a, an assembly BOM. <clears throat> And I'll see my assembly BOM definition data. I'll fill out here based on all the objects. This includes all the structural part objects. They're not actually, remember, I'm still in a lube oil drawing. I haven't actually left my lube oil drawing. So I'm going to load up all these part properties. Now, selecting them here again selects the part view object over here. And the same thing is capable from here that I just showed jumping around with the pipe, meaning that I can highlight an object, right click, and say, well, take me to the model drawing where that plate lives. Now, I guarantee you this will start an epic war of interdisciplinary fights between piping and structural groups. <laughs> but here I go. Right? From a lube oil drawing, I linked in some part views of some structural objects, selected the part object in my part properties window, and can say, right click, take me right to that structural model drawing where that part exists. Navigating through this project got a lot more intuitive now. I don't have to go back to Navigator and then hunt and peck right through my structural drawing say well what was that was that the, the main deck was that a, a, a wash ball can what was that part where did it belong to I could have looked at the properties I guess and then looked at the drawing name and then remembered it and then gone to navigator but now I can just pull up an apart properties right click and say go right to the model drawing especially handy for pipe maybe I'm not I'm not feeling a lot of love from the pipers in the room so so what happens when you put it all together Right? It's, it's only, this is only three functions. I'm not even showing you a, the fold Monty here. This is just a fraction of the cool stuff we've got. But what happens when you look at just the cool things we've seen here, just those three things, and what can we do with it? Right? Well, I figured something out. I said, well, part views is neat because I can load up all the parts in a Shipcon project by volume, right? And I'm constantly being hammered by Navy program shipbuilders to say, well, what are all the parts that are in a compartment? Ship instructor doesn't know what a compartment is, right? 
We do build sequencing for production staging. I know to install a part on a deck at some point, but I can't tell you these are all the parts that exist in this space until now. Now I can. Well, first, let's find a cool way to categorize this information. I can use an enhanced product hierarchy, create a new product hierarchy, right? Not my build sequence, but a new product hierarchy that's called compartments, right? And create a new, a whole different set of data under compartments to say space, type, whatever I want. I'll break it down however I want. So space, compartments, fine. Maybe equipment, distributed systems, standard assemblies. And I can come in here and create some new product hierarchy levels that has absolutely nothing to do with how I'm going to build the ship. But it's really important as a view for how I'm describing the ship to my client, right? So here I have, I have a new product hierarchy level called machinery space. Well, that's all well and good, but it doesn't do me anything until I can actually put things in that product hierarchy. And how can I do it easily? I mean, I could load this stuff up and just click one at a time, say that that's what it is, put it in that product hierarchy level, click the next one, say that that's what it is. But maybe we could use a faster way to get to that data. Well, I know. Maybe I can make a new BOM that gives me the sorting data I need directly. Well, all right, so I've got this volume. I've seen this three times now, and it still never fails to impress me. I'm actually going to get rid of all my M-Links. I don't even want to see any M-Links. No M-Links. Nothing at all in this room. It's a product hierarchy drawing with nothing loaded in it. All I'm going to do is run part views and say, in this volume that exists in my machinery space, I drew that cube, by the way, to kind of cover my machinery space, just load up the shipcon parts that hit and or exist in that volume. Right? And there they all are in all their glory. Well, that's great. Got something to work with. A lot nicer than I'm linking a bunch of stuff in or jumping into a product hierarchy drawing. I'm linking a ton of things and pecking and choosing. I can now say, well, that's everything that exists in that volume. And because they're part view parts, it's easy for me to start whittling away at this. Well, let's get rid of some things. But I could pick and choose them right here in the viewport. I could say, well, I'll select all that main deck stuff and blow it away. But you know what? I know that all this main deck up here happens to occur under a particular build sequence. It actually all belongs in unit 1110. So why am I going to bother penting, hunting, pecking? All I'm going to do is just load up a part properties window, look at the assembly sequencing, and find everything that belongs to 1110, right? Highlight all of it in this list. It'll highlight them all on my drawing and just mass delete everything out of 1110. I don't need any of that structural stuff from 1110 for my space. So get rid of it. Done. It's easy. By the way, it's usually safer to approach this in a product hierarchy drawing because I can't accidentally blow away actual parts. Just a little hint. I know I'm going to get phone calls now. How do I get this back? So that's great. Got rid of this, cleaned it up a little bit. Now, I don't need all of these structural elements to exist in my space, right? I don't. And what's cool here is, you'll see I have my product hierarchy window open here. Picking a part in the part properties window highlights it in the model. We saw that already. If you have your product hierarchy window, it also highlights it in the product hierarchy as well. Auto selects that object in product hierarchy as well. This makes it easy to do mass selections. Maybe I don't want the fuel oil system. There's a fuel oil system. There's are the parts of the fuel oil system. I don't actually want to include those as part of my space for whatever that reason might be. That's fine. Just delete them. Gone. Delete them out of this view. They don't even anything. I don't have to worry about them. I didn't leave the part it's still there. All that information is still there. I'm just not looking at it right now. I don't want to see it at the moment. But everything else that's left in the piping and equipment, I do want to assign it to this. That's everything that's left in that list was just piping and equipment. Select all of it. Shows up here. Right click over here and just say assign to an assembly. Assign it to my uh, machinery space assembly level. Now, every one of those parts is associated. All this, all of that is automatically now associated with machinery space compartment number one, 18, A, who knows, right? Done. One go. That's it. Maybe there's a couple other oddball things, right? Maybe I want those standard assembly ladders I put in. I put those vertical ladders in as standard assembly. The problem was they're structure parts. 
So in the, most of my BOMs, unless I have one set up, it's just going to show up like another structural plate part, right? Except that standard assemblies can be given their own production sequence, meaning they exist in their own assembly level. So I can just basically select every one of the 10-foot vertical assembly levels in my part properties window and automatically select them. And now that I've selected them, they're selected in my product hierarchy window, and I just say, assign those to the machinery space, just like everything else. There they are. We'll add those to the machinery space. Put it under uh, standard. Maybe this isn't the most ornate example, but in the real world, it's not that much more if your space had hundreds of pieces of equipment and hundreds of pieces of pipe. I just have to wait for a moment for this to fill out the actual operations just as fast. It's not any slower for me to reassign those objects, right? And finally, what I thought was really neat uh, is, well, you know, I've got all these things assigned. I guess I can make reports for them, right? generate a report, say, use the alternate product hierarchy and show me all the things in machinery space. Wouldn't it be cooler if I could make a drawing that showed the machinery space with just those objects that are in it, and maybe even a BOM as a checklist? The hand of the field engineer, when he goes out there to do a check finalization on that compartment, and say, pump number one on my list, it's right there, check. Yep, it's there. It's easy. It's a piece of cake, because I can generate assembly drawings from alternate product hierarchies now. Meaning I can go in and say, generate an assembly drawing from the compartment product hierarchy. Show me the machinery space. That's what that drawing was. Have a look. That's the machinery space we just defined. Only the parts in the machinery space we just defined. That bill of material lists every one of those parts, however I want to define it, broken down however I'd like to, with a view These are just the objects that exist in that machinery space. There they are. That's every one of them. Could be hundreds. Could be tens. But there they are. There's my drawing. Want to make it fancier? Could. I could rerun part views against those. That way I have the deck and bulkheads as references. I could M link them in the model. Right. Whatever I needed to do. I could label them all. This is just an assembly drawing. I can label from any one of the BOMs on my drawing at this point. Just like you would any other normal assembly drawing. It just happens that that one only shows me space views. Broken down however I want. Just show me piping systems that exist through this space. Right? That was just three of the features. You guys are a tough crowd. Three Advantage Pack features gave me that capability. If I had a nickel for every time I got hounded on that from the Navy guys about defining stuff that way, I'd have like 55 cents. But this functionality is fantastic. And what's neat is that you have personnel at Ship Constructor who are constantly playing with these ideas. Right? Part views was not built with the express intent of being able to do compartmentalization and volumetric compartmentalization identification, right? It was made as an easy, fast, intuitive way to see what was in your project while you were working. Right? But some of us went, well, why stop there? I could filter on part property, I could show a volume and space and load only those parts and then filter out the things I don't want and Actually, it's real quick to make a compartment space drawing. There was nothing. No time at all. This functionality is available now. None of this is pie in the sky. None of this you have to wait for. These are the kinds of things you're missing out on right now if you haven't had an opportunity to update to the latest versions to get them. Everything I just did right now, I did with a stock version of Ship Constructor 2012 latest version available. That's actually how I approach it. I don't actually have Ship Constructor on my computer. I said, let's go get a new one. Just download it from the website and go. All that functionality is available now. Only thing stopping it is you. 
and then calling me to figure out what those commands were to run those things, which I'm going to get inundated with. I refer you all to Melissa Goff if she's in the room. Where is she? Yeah, she's out. Good. Call Melissa Goff in my office. <laughs> She'll be happy to walk you through any one of those things. So that's all I have. I was worried it was going to be boring. Was it boring? Was it at least interesting? I mean, there were some neat things, right? What's cool about it is, when you think about it, right, I didn't really show you any cool new modeling capability, right? I didn't show you any enterprise framework or marine drafting or any of this. With the simple tools you have in the normal environment you're in, I said, well, let's look at our data. How can we manipulate the data? I didn't model all those things. They existed from all my model is working. But now I've got a different view of how to manipulate all that information right within the ShipCon interface, right? I mean, I could have written a code to extract a report that generated a table that I put on an Excel and issued as a yard drawing for the compartment space checkoff, but why? I could just generate an assembly drawing with a BOM on it and hand that out. Looks way nicer at the very least. Because you get all the cool assembly drawings, right? It's center of gravity. I can define global dimensions to point on any one of those objects. You guys ever use those? Probably not. Well, that'll be my next presentation. Are there any questions? <laughs>